G'day everyone, my name is David Meyer and welcome back to First Time Reefer TV. And today, my friends, we are going to give a quick update of where my K uh, Series 2 Pro Reef is at and what my dream that is happening behind this wall actually is. Now, the tank is kicking along pretty well. It is still in a bit of a uh, ugly stage at the moment with diatoms in the sand. I am stirring that up to try and uh, continually clean it. And I'm actually bringing up my nutrients because uh, I'm really struggling to uh, uh, keep nitrates up at all, no matter how much I feed. My phos is sitting about 0.08, so I'm gonna add a bit of uh, phosphate minus from aquaforest into there just to bring it down a little bit. And I'm uh, actually currently adding um, from Pax Bellum, because I had a bottle of it, nitrogen molybdenum, which brings up your nitrate. Um, I'm trying, it's sitting under 0 .5, uh, 0 0.5 at the moment. I think I'm going to try and bring it up to about 3 and see what the results are. Hopefully that keeps the, the balance uh, in check a little bit better. Um, and then I reckon some of the coral might actually do better as well. Uh, a couple of beautiful scollies down here uh, that I'm doing is video series of um, trying to save them because they are receding a little bit. Uh, so that video will come out soon. Um, but overall the coral are looking really, really happy. Uh, I'm starting to get placements of coral in certain places, so I think that's going to be my hammer garden. A few gonies out here, some SPS encrusting over on Pride Rock there. Um, and I'm just not sure what I'm going to have down the bottom here. And this is slowly starting to fill in as well. Um, so, so far I'm really happy about how the tank is going. But I am looking for some new fish for the tank. So if you guys got any suggestions to go with a, uh, a pair of clowns, yellow tang, a Luna Rasp, which I think is going because it's a bit of a jerk. Got a Mandarin in there, Orchid Dotty back, and a uh, Blue Spot Blenny as well. I really want a school of fish, and I'm thinking like maybe some Blue Chromas because they look pretty cool, but I wonder if there's any other cooler uh, school of fish that can go the tanks. So if you've got any suggestions, please leave it in the comments down below. And uh, uh, if they are really nice, I will go and suss them out. Uh, so that's the tank. The style is actually covering this tank really well. Um, I'm trying to find someone that has like a proper light meter to maybe come over and we can do some par reading. So if anyone has a par meter or knows of one, please shoot me a message and we can come over and do a quick video series on that. Um, I am going to add some supplemental lighting to this tank as well, which I will tell you in an upcoming video. Um, and, and then down the bottom, I'll quickly bring you guys down so you can see. So currently, uh, there's obviously still the heater in there. The Great White Delua GW7 is skimming like an absolute beast. I've really worked out how to tune that now. And be surprising, uh, tuning less air has been better for me. Um, I've got the MRC reactor in there running some aquaforest carbon, which I told you I'm going to add some phosphate miners into that. That's coming off uh, the manifold. The mantis blocks are, are really starting to colour in really well and the uh, the balls are underneath it. I now have my KH lab running on the Core 7th doser with all of the, uh, the dosing liquids down here. I also have a little air pump down to here just to circulate some air into my media. I'm hoping that helps in reducing my phosphates. And then I've got my eCoral light controller, which currently has the temp and pH probe in there. And then uh, I'm going to be adding in uh, all of my equipment onto their power board as well. And running through with you guys how to set schedules and how to get it running. So everything is working really hunky-dory on the tank. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. Uh, my water station had a bit of an upgrade, so we've got one for RO, one for salt water. Um, so this I can just mix the salt water and just do a quick water change by using the, the, the power head just to go straight to the tank. Um, and then obviously my RO unit, which is pumping out, I think 100 litres in about four hours, which I've, I was pretty impressed with. Now I'm a little bit time poor, so uh, I am trying to get these videos out and I'm trying to stick to my one video every week and I might do a bonus video during the week here and there, but I have a stack of equipment to uh, to go through. So, you know, first of all, we've got this Ripple Nano ATO. Now you guys know this uh, ATO has been like smashing in the market lately. 
Uh, heaps of good reviews, incredible customer service and support. So I'm going to run this uh, to, uh, obviously the Cade has a reservoir already, but I'm going to use this to top up the reservoir so then I can stop uh, relying on me remembering to uh, top it up. So I'm going to make that automated, which is fantastic. I've got a CO2 scrubber from Pacific Sun that is about to go into the tank and I wanted to get the controller in there before I installed this because I wanted to show you the effects of CO2 scrubbing on your skimmer uh, while I had a pH monitor in there. Um, it's been a new range of foods that I've been trying as well from the dudes from Coral Creations. Now I've had this food for a while and I haven't done a review because I wanted to make sure that my coral have shown positive results and that they've been happy. Um, so I've been testing it actually for probably a good couple of months now um, and just quietly between you and me, I actually am really happy with the food. And then, ugh, this bad boy here, I've got a Pentair 25 watt UV sterilizer which I am going to go through all the benefits of using a sterilizer and what it can do for your tank at the different flow rates. I think that's all I've got for now. But that's a quick update on my tank. Any uh, feedback, please let me know if you've got some schooling fish or some fish that I should add in here um, for either pest control or cleanup crew or anything like that, please let me know down the bottom. Now, let me show you out back. So we are now behind the wall in my garage and you're probably thinking, Dave, what on earth are you doing in your backyard and what does that have to do with the fish tank? Now let me turn you around and show you why. I am getting a fish room! Yes! I have been dreaming about this day ever since I was a little kid keeping fish and the fish room has always been my absolute dream to own one day and I am so proud of the fact that I convinced my wife to let me have a, a little fish room in the in the backyard and when I do say little it is 3.15 meters across 3.7 meters long um, and I'm getting a monster tank or what I consider a monster tank probably not everyone's monster tank but you know uh, the Cade is still staying with us that is going to come into the back corner here let me show you I want to make sure you guys can hear me that's all can you guys see it? You good? We all good? Perfect, yeah, you're done, okay. So the cade is still staying with me. That is gonna go into the back corner here. And then I've got a peninsula tank going straight down the middle, which is gonna be an eight by four tank. I won't show, uh, share any other info about that until I start doing the build. Um, and then over on this side, I'm gonna have like a working sink so I can clean all my skimmers. Um, and do all my maintenance work, do my fragging there and get everything done. All of the fish stuff is out of the house. My wife is happy. I have a room to chill out in for the rest of my life. I'm happy. Uh, so construction on this uh, starts in a couple of days, uh, which I'm super excited about. But if you guys have any suggestions of what I really should keep in mind, please let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about plumbing all of my water into here uh, and have a mixing station still in the garage um, to make things easier, but actually plumb everything straight to the sump. And I am going to run both tanks off the one sump. Uh, I thought that'll just make things a lot easier. Got a huge sump coming for it from my boy, Eric Jurcic at Hamali, Australia. And ever since I stroked one of those sumps at Reefstock two years ago, I just couldn't wait to own one myself. So this for me is my dream build. I've been thinking about this day forever and obviously it just happens to be a marine tank uh, because I've been into marine for the last couple of years. So uh, if you guys have any suggestions whatsoever that I should really take into consideration about this room, shoot me a message or leave a comment down below. But I am super, super excited to share this build uh, with you. Uh, and I'm hoping that, you know, everything that I've learned over my short couple of years of reefing, um, I can actually uh, fix those mistakes that I made um, in, in, in this build. So I'm gonna try and have this as automated as possible. There is a floor drain. So if anything happens and the fish tank floods, it goes all into the drain instead of, instead of going into my house and making my wife clean it up. Um, 
But I think this is gonna be awesome. So if you guys wanna join me along this ride of my fish room build, make sure you subscribe, smash that notification bell, and my friends, until next time, live in the dream. Peace.